Hey, I'm AJ Fry, and welcome to Mistakes Were Made, the podcast about making mistakes and what we can learn from them. The format was in part inspired by the TIFU subreddit, where folks submit anonymous stories of mistakes they've made. Of course, there's nothing anonymous here. And in celebration of mistakes, I will not record a second take of this opening bit, and I endeavor to provide interviews that are raw and uncut. And that's pretty much what you're getting with this seventh episode. I made a couple of edits for brevity and to chop out some audio spikes. It is a special episode in that I've had a career for, uh, well, 13 years interviewing all kinds of awesome folks, and this is the first time that I've ever interviewed someone you could call a politician. I, I don't think of myself as an especially political person. Of course, I can realize the impact that government and institutions of authority can have on people's lives, so it is a topic I'd like to cover, especially on a show that focuses on mistakes. We all know how many our governments tend to make. Um, and I may have found the perfect first guest for a foray into the topic, someone who is new to politics as well. She's the Green Party federal candidate here in my riding of Davenport, and as you'll hear in our conversation, I've been a Green Party voter whenever given the option, because, you know, fundamentally I believe we humans need to be doing a whole lot more for our environment. That said, aside from the Green Party's focus on protecting our environment, I'm not all that familiar with Green Party policies and how they compare with the other major political parties in Canada, so I found our conversation very enlightening, and hopefully you will too. Enjoy. Hannah Conover Arthurs, welcome to Mistakes Were Made with me, AJ Fry, who's making lots of them already. <laughs> so uh, we'll pick up again. I asked you about uh, your, your running for the Green Party federally. Mm-hmm. And how did you come into this position where you just skipped over municipal, provincial, and just going right for the for the big guns? Yeah. So, yeah, I got to see Elizabeth May speak a couple of years ago, and she was just so incredible. She really, like, blew me away. I'm like, this is a really badass, badass bitch, really. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. So she... She inspired me a lot. And then after that, I was like, okay, I just want to support her with whatever she does. I want to vote green Mm. forever. And I want to get more involved. And really what made me get more involved in politics in general was when um, our our, uh, government bought the pipeline. (laughs) The day that I heard that we bought the pipeline, especially since I had been protesting against the original pipeline for a couple of years and felt like maybe that was getting somewhere and a lot of like movement on the ground and a lot of activism going on. And then when we bought the pipeline, it just like, brought tears to my eyes. It was such a punch in the face. I I couldn't believe that we're doing such a short sighted Mm. thing like that. And so that kind of, that kind of made me realize I needed to get more political Um, and that the people in charge are the ones who are making these irresponsible moves that will drastically impact us for the rest of our lives. So I started volunteering with the Green Party after that, and I got to help out in the provincial election last year for the Davenport Green Party and got to meet a lot of like young, cool women, people that I could relate to that were just normal uh normal people in my community and they were all living in Davenport and they were all greens. And we, it was a really grassroots uh, campaign, but I was really impressed to see what we were able to accomplish in a short amount of time with just a handful of committed, um, inspired people. So, so after who left so that you could be our candidate, well, Kirsten Snyder, she was the provincial, right. um, candidate last year and really love Kirsten and um she after the election she had had an injury and she hurt her knee and she had to get some surgery and her life kind of took a different turn where I don't Mm. think she wanted to run again um but I I was able to go to a conference that they had last fall in BC and there was just all of these Green Party members from all across the country. And there was something really electric in the room. And I thought, like, am I joining a cult or something? Like, is this just, (laughs) you know, another kind of um, ploy to get people to, like, support a party? And, you know, I had to really, like, break down a lot of those kind of hesitations in my own mind. And I realized that 
you know, probably every party does the same kind of rally of like, we like right. this thing and everyone cheers. Yeah. You know? Um, and then I realized that like what we're doing there and what we're talking about there is, you know, protecting our planet from catastrophic climate change. And if there was anything that I cared about, that is really the only thing that motivated me. You know? This is why I have only ever voted when it was, you know, a, a party vote municipally. There's no. You know, yeah. Uh, but always voted green because it seems to me so fundamental that before we get into our, you know, little human foibles of how we should organize ourselves, we need to organize saving the planet that we live <laughs> on. Exactly as, it. You're right. There is no planet B. Yeah. Yeah. And that that was exactly it. And that's what really made me realize, like, you know what? No matter what, even if it's a political party and even if people can kind of fall into this trap of being so attached to, you know, party and party lines, Mm -hmm. I, I realized that what we're trying to accomplish and what the function of the Green Party is, it's so much bigger than that. Mm. And it's really aligned with all of my values. Everything that I had been doing in my life up until then was all of the same kind of actions that we're speaking about in our platform, you know, Mm. like things like organic farming and banning glyphosates and labeling GMOs and, you know, transitioning to renewables Mm. and, you know, protecting our, our air and, and protecting our water. These are, these are things that I already was trying to do. And, and this is the only, um, political party that has always championed those issues. So, so I felt really, really inspired in the fall last fall. And then somebody actually approached me and it was, it's a weird thing where just people kept on asking me like, so are you going to run? Like, when are you going to run? And I'm like, what do you even mean? Like, <laughs> why would I ever do that? You know, do you I, have uh, like a background in performance at all? Or, you know, I'm trying to think, do you have like, did you study politics or <laughs> economics or anything like that? No, like, no, I haven't done anything like that. I, I have done performance. Actually, I went to an art school. Um, I, I did lots of arts as a kid and I went to a perf- performing arts school in high school and did a lot of like musical theater and stuff like Which that. Which high school did you go to? Rosedale Heights. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, those are all kind of soft skills that could add to, you know, getting yeah. up in front of people and just being able to talk. And that, that was one thing that, you know, I didn't see myself in politics whatsoever. I didn't even understand why people thought I would be you know, a good candidate. But I think, I think because I'm passionate about these issues and because I can't stop myself from talking about it. And I really like teaching people about these things. I really Mm. like communicating these ideas to people and anyone who knows me well, wasn't surprised by me becoming a green candidate. (laughs) It was kind of like, oh, well that makes sense. Cause it's, I like, I can't stop myself from, from talking about these things and wanting people to understand why it's important to do X, Y, and Z. So, so people from the party kept on asking me like, Hey, are you going to run? And, oh, you know, and someone who was, um, someone who was scouting candidates for Ontario, she, came up to me after the the convention and we had a really long chat and she had run herself before and she's like so i hear you're gonna run and i'm like who told you this like who is saying this stuff to you um but we had a really really good conversation and after we had talked like one of the things she got across to me was we just need candidates because we need representation and people want to have the option to vote green. Mm. And even if I didn't want to do anything in the public eye, even just to be a paper ballot, right? that goes a long way. And, and that, you know, if you're living somewhere and you want to vote green, but you don't have the option because no one runs, then, you know, you just lost so many supporters like that. Right. Right. And and that idea really resonated with me. And I was like, you know what? I could just be a paper candidate. I don't have to do anything I don't feel comfortable with. And, but you've been doing the thing. Well, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's kind of what I decided last year. And so I knew going into this year, that this was what I wanted to do. And it kind of gave me the whole year to like mentally prepare and do a lot of that, um, 
it, I slowly broke down my own boundaries in my own mind of, of mm. what I was comfortable with. And it took the pretty much the last nine months to, you know, break down my own boundaries and barriers and be like, okay, sure. I'll do an interview. Okay. Now I'll do a debate and then, okay, I'll not go to, you know, like all of these opportunities well, I never thought I'd, I'd do. What is that like then? I mean, you were talking with the other candidates uh, just yesterday and I know like Julia is the liberal candidate and, and Andrew Cash, the NDP candidate. And these are people who have been involved in politics for a number of years. How do you feel when you're sitting up there on stage and you're fielding the same questions that these people are receiving? Yeah. Yeah. So initially, you know, a couple of months ago, I was telling myself it's all about knocking on doors and getting out lawn signs. And I would feel comfortable with canvassing. And I'd done a lot of that with the provincial election. And I'd yeah. helped out some people municipally for, you know, city council seats. And I'm like, I can talk door to door, but I don't want to I don't want to debate. And and then somebody had said to me who had run themselves, they're like, you know, the debates are really, really good tools to get you know, contact with your constituents, really let people know where you stand. It's, mm. it goes a really long way. I highly recommend you do debates. So then, so then I was like, okay, I'll do debates. And really I was very nervous, like going into the debates and I was trying to, you know, study up on the policy and just, just feel comfortable with the material. And, yeah. um, I have to say that once I, once I did, like one of the first debates, I was so pleasantly surprised. Like it went so much better than I thought. And <laughs> and I, I do think actually that the other candidates were like, whoa, like where did this girl come from? You know, because right. I don't think they expected anything of me. And I do, I, I had run into them earlier in the campaign um, at like some street festivals and things like that. And it was this weird, weird thing where they're like, we've heard about you. <laughs> <laughs> they knew about me, even though I didn't think that I had much of a profile, but um, they're like, we knew that you were the candidate and we know about you. And so that was strange. And then when we saw each other at the debates, um, yeah, I think I really, um, I really surprised them. I don't think they realized that I was going to be like coming at them and be right. a strong debater. And even um, after one of our first debates, then Julie had said to me, oh, I'm so nervous. I feel like you're going to attack me or whatever. She was nervous before the oh. debate, more nervous than I was because of what I was going to say to her. So I was like, wow. <laughs> what are those debates like then? Because watching the, the federal leaders debate mm -hmm. where, yeah, obviously Trudeau is going to be the focal point of a lot of uh, attacks and he certainly has a lot of things that he needs to defend. Yes. Uh, but I imagine when you're just running as an MP, I mean, it, it's maybe not the same like personal attacks or attacking one another's records, but is it more attacking like party platform policies sort of thing? Yeah, I I do have to say I felt really happy to be a green in these scenarios. It's like, it's just easy being green because, right. you know, you're just champion. Like I thought Kermit <laughs> said it isn't easy. Being <laughs> <laughs> I found it pretty good. I, I think that um, like you're advocating for things that are common sense. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are waking up to the reality of climate change. And, you know, it's, it's strange because I think before this election, and really I'm noticing this too, since I've been running that when I went into it, I'm like, Oh, it's just the green party. You know, no one takes us seriously. Like it's the perfect platform for me to be a candidate because it was low profile. And that right. was what made me feel comfortable being someone new getting into it. I'm like, okay, like, I can work, you know, I can work towards, and I think that it's a long game. Like a lot of people who have gotten their seats who are green MPs, they've run multiple times. And that's something that I also understood that, you know, to learn how to be good, you know, in office and learn what people care about in your community. It's like you, you need to run a couple of times. You, you got to practice get this experience yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And nobody can train you on how to do this unless you just, go for it right it's kind of one of those weird professions where there's like the prerequisites are you know non-existent almost you just have to run so yeah that was in my mind but I think that it's easy being green in those scenarios because even with the 
the liberals and the NDP right now, it's kind of like a two way race between their parties and they've had it out for each other for a couple of years. And so there's a lot of kind of more personal attacks going on between the, right. the liberals and the NDP. And I think that my function as a green in a debate is to point out the inconsistencies in their plans, which is not in line with science and why it's important to understand that if you care about the changing climate and if you want to have a real impact that you need to like vote in line with facts and not just things that sound good on paper. Well, then why is it that the liberals and NDP, both parties that are very, you know, pro environment and, and recognizing climate change, et cetera, et cetera. Is it just because that message, message is now popular with folks that they are now thinking like, okay, well, we got to put something together. Yes. Like, why aren't they going to what the Green Party is putting forward if the Green Party is putting forward the absolute best plan? Yeah. So I've, I've thought about that too. And I even said that in one of my opening remarks for a debate was, it's like the other parties just decided this election that that climate change was an issue. You know, it's right. kind of like a political football for a lot of um for, for pretty much up until this election, it has just been like a speaking point. People don't understand that it encapsulates all things. You know, yeah. the environment is everything and yeah. it is everything we will ever know is in the environment, you know, and like to your point, all of these other little squabbles and, you know, we can deal with those issues later. Like yeah. once we address, you know, and if we address the climate crisis, then a lot of those issues will be solved in the process of addressing it. You know, the other parties, they're still, and this is something that I don't think that people necessarily understand. And even, you know, there's a lot of like equating the Greens and the NDP is very similar. And I just think there's a, there is a lot of distinctions and people say, Mm. Oh, why don't you just, you know, make a coalition and just, you know, I'm like the NDP are still, um, playing into the needs of big business. They're still sympathetic to big oil. They're still talking about things like fracked gas. And yeah. they... I don't want to play devil's advocate for those yeah. Yeah, entities yeah, yeah. because I'm certainly for not sure. aligned. But, I, I mean, wouldn't common sense dictate that, like, a sudden upheaval of all the structures that maintain our society, mm-hmm. like, immediately dissolving big businesses yes. in a in a cataclysmic kind of sudden move that would create a bunch of turmoil for sure so i imagine like putting forward ideas that are like well we got to do things in a bit more gradual scale so that there isn't this yeah. sudden it's more palatable and i think that 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 is the thing is that they're going to have the more moderate views mm. like a lot of the things in our platform they're pretty radical ideas like things like guaranteed basic income like No one else is talking about that because it's like a little bit too wild to really, you know, for for the other parties. But it it seems like it's explained to you. It's like, oh, you get rid of so much bureaucracy of behind the scenes. If like, oh, you don't need to apply for this kind of support or this kind of support. You just have your sudden. Yeah. 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 Nobody's keeping tabs on how you spend your money, what you're doing, what day jobs you're getting. You know, Mm. there's yeah, it's. There's so many reasons why it's an amazing idea, and it would solve a lot of these issues of this transition off of fossil fuels. Mm. But um, I think that that is the best part about the Green Party is that we're able to bring in radical views. Right. And then in time, those things usually do get adopted. You know, like we were one of the first parties to call for legalizing same sex marriage. And that was in the 80s, you know, and right. now it's something that we've done. And we were one of the first parties to call for legalizing marijuana, you know, and, and now we've actually done that. So I feel like we're, we're planting the seed for really good progressive ideas. And really and then, good pot. Too. You know, exactly. <laughs> and then in the future, like, right. who knows, maybe the other parties will be like, oh, wow, we just had this really cool, great idea. Yeah, and they've actually just stolen it from the greens. You know? Well, I want to ask you about one one thing on your uh, little pamphlet here that I got in my hand. Uh, support for small businesses is like your third key issue right here, which sounds like something you would find on a conservative party right. pamphlet. So, and I have heard this from a few of my friends before who are, you know, very left leaning NDP supporters. Oh, well, the greens, they're more conservative than they come across as. Where does that come from? What yeah. is the connection there? 
Yeah, this this is a comment that I get to, and it's a little confusing to me. I guess that, you know, the Green Party was founded by an economist. And mm. so it's all rooted in, in good economics, you know, triple bottom line economics. We're factoring people, planet, and profit. Mm. And so I think that... You know, up until this point, even probably in the past, people are speaking to these kind of like, you know, conservative, fiscally conservative ideas that the Greens champion. But when we're talking about being fiscally conservative, it's not going after people and their money or, you know, cutting services like none of our platform is about cutting services to normal people. It's really all about fair taxation where we're going after the wealthy and the rich who are accumulating the majority of the wealth without that being redistributed yeah. redistributed to the population. So so I think that maybe that's where that kind of misconception comes from. So there's someone in my life who is who is staunchly uh conservative but fiscally so tends to be a little bit more liberal with with certain uh moral issues. Mm-hmm. Would they uh, find uh perhaps footing within the Green Party oh, should they be looking at Green Party policies? Definitely. And and that's the interesting thing when you go through our platform it's like we're we're talking about really radical kind of progressive things, things that are extremely socially progressive, even more so than even the liberals and the NDP, like things like decriminalizing drug possession, Mm -hmm. you know, legalizing sex work, you know, things that the other, the other parties are just not going there. Right. And those would be, those would be dramatic in terms of improving the lives of like marginalized people. Um, I suppose it's a bit of a difference of like, there's religious conservatives, Mm -hmm. but then there's um, like libertarianism. Mm -hmm. And I feel like maybe libertarianism is a little bit closer to what the green party is putting forward. Well, I think like with libertarianism is like, you know, the market knows best. And I think that there's still more, you know, government kind of, control with with the greens it's like our objective is to recorrect our greenhouse gas emissions and so it's like whatever measures we can put in place to decentivize bad behavior and incentivize good behavior Mm. you know so there is still that social manipulation of you know putting things in place so we're discouraging bad things like we're, we're putting a tax on sugary drinks you know discouraging buying sugary drinks in the first place like right. you know banning plastics or making sure that manufacturers are responsible for their plastics like de-incentivizing waste like moving to circular economies like these are ideas that they do require some some government intervention but in the grand scheme, it's like it's in everyone's best interest to, to move to this direction. Right. And I right. think that people, too, think like, oh, you know, what do we have to give up? It's like, you know, we're going to have to pay one way or another. Like the the what's the cost of inaction? Mm. You know, <laughs> like what are we willing to lose if we don't do enough right now? Like yeah. the, what we're going to have to give up if we don't act on climate change is so drastically basically everything eventually (laughs) yeah Yeah. yeah. it's like you know yeah like drinkable water and breathable air and like a a functioning food supply and you know our space and you know (laughs) well let's let's step away from politics for a second this is mistakes were made yes um and i know you've got a story about uh something happening at your job recently yeah um so before you get to that one, I'll, I'll share a story of a mistake on uh, in the workplace with you. Um, I was actually at the uh, debate, well, not the debate part yesterday, but while you were talking with uh, with some women uh, about issues facing women, and I have in my life recently really tried to open my mind and uh, to you know see the world through new perspectives, and I've been trying to be a you know, an ally. Mm-hmm. And uh, I worked for Space Channel um, for a number of years, hosting a show. And I would get voiceovers that were written by producers that I would then need to take into a voiceover booth to read, uh, to go along with um, stories. And there was a a movie, Hidden Figures, about the women who were responsible for putting, um, I think it was the Apollo astronauts, Mm -hmm. um, or supporting like the you know, the space race, doing all the the mathematics. And this voiceover that I uh, had in my hand was written to include the word uh, female scientists and female this and female that. And I've always thought, like, that sounds weird because you wouldn't say, like, male 
in place of female yeah. in a lot. So I uh, got back to my desk after recording this voiceover and I kind of blasted the team saying like, can we just try to, you know, rewrite these things? So we're saying women instead of female, because female sounds like you're describing a suspect and not, <laughs> you know, it's just there's better ways to, to write these things. And I hit send on this. And uh, my my producer, Amy, who I absolutely loved uh, loved working with was, was the one who ended up uh, writing that voiceover and she showed me that she just copy pasted the uh, parlance from the back of the DVD like it wasn't even that she wrote it she just you know tweaked yeah. it a little bit and I felt so embarrassed for having like blasted everyone thinking that it was one of the men on our team who wrote this <laughs> VO and it was a woman and I just felt like yes. a, a total ass so that was uh that was a mistake that i made in in the workplace totally our, our show got canceled not too long after that but that wasn't because of my mistake but... <laughs> yeah <laughs> trying to be the best male feminist and it can go Sometimes awry it can, yeah it can blow up in your face so i totally know what you mean <laughs> <laughs> but you were working somewhere nearby i don't want to give away where i live but somewhere in the neighborhood anyway yeah, I was working for, I mean, I'm like a cook by trade. And cool. so I um, I was working in a kitchen and doing my day job. And this was during the day. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a, you know, nine to five kind of day job. And mm. I had been thinking about um, I'd been thinking about running in the election pretty much since the beginning of the year. And so right. I hadn't, you know, told many people except for close people that that was my plan until maybe a couple of months ago as it was getting closer and there was just more things kind of piling on. Yeah. So, you need to announce who your candidate is and that's yeah. going to come out one way or another. Exactly. So, you know, and I recognize too that, not everybody cares. Like no one's going to care if you want to do this cool thing. And it was really important to me. And there's a lot of people out there that it's important to, but that's not everybody. And so in the last couple months, as things have been getting more and more busy, I've just been completely distracted and just unable to really function in my job because you know the whole day that I'm there chopping carrots I'm just thinking about a thousand other things that I need to do or would rather be doing or you know yeah. the second that I get out of there I need to do x y and z and a lot of planning of events and things in the evening so I'd be running off or I'd need to leave early and I just couldn't yeah I, I just couldn't pay attention to the job so I was going down to part time and I let my my manager know that and, and everybody kind of knew what I was doing. And I'm like, maybe they'll be able to see me through this this next two months. You know, really, September, October is like such a busy time in the election. Right. And so I'm like, this is, you know, I'll try and just like do this part time and see what I can do. Um, so then the other day I was. I actually got an opportunity to go speak at a public school and I was like speaking to a bunch of different classes of, of grade fours to grade sixes. It was a really amazing opportunity and right. I was so happy to get to speak to the kids and they had amazing questions, a lot about climate change and right. um, it was all, all their directed questions. I can only imagine what it must be like to be a kid yeah. today. Cause I can remember feeling concerned about our environment you know, yeah. 30 years ago when yeah. I was six years old, yeah. uh, you know, understanding, oh, yeah, we really do need to recycle. Like our resources are finite if yeah. we don't like figure yeah. this out. But, you know, there's lots of adults and it's, you know, yeah. technology is getting better. I'm sure no. now it's got to be a different kind it's of a completely fear. different kind of story. Yeah. And the, I, I also it's like when. I was a kid in school, there was some attention paid to it, but nobody was really talking about like global warming and you know, I remember um, when an inconvenient truth came out. Right. And that's when it really kind of like sunk in this impending doom. And it's, you know, it hasn't really been um, approached with any urgency. Mm -hmm. And that's what I recognized from my childhood was there was no like immediate urgency um, except for now kids are thinking about it. So I would say that probably five out of every 10 questions were about climate change right. These, and it was different classes of kids. And so they all had their own questions and it was 
it, with every different group of kids. So you ended up it was all about climate change. Yes. So then I went to this thing, and then it was such a great experience. I'm getting out of out of there, and then I get a text from my boss, and she's like, "Can we have a talk?" And I'm like, "Yeah." So I call her up. I'm like, "I just talked to all these school kids. It was so awesome. I was at this debate yesterday. It was so amazing." She's like, "Oh, that's great. That sounds really great. It's too bad that we're gonna have to let you go." And I'm like. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, I wasn't really that surprised about it. Um, and so I didn't give her a hard time. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Like I understand, right. you know, and I've been a little busy with some other things. Yes. Yes. And I realized that there was no way that they were going to see me through this entire election. Like it right. was just, I was not good for the bottom line. Like, you know, you don't need an employee that is only really available two days a week or, right. you know, and even though I felt like some people cared and I do think that people that I work with do care and they were, you know, being supportive and helping me out, but it only goes so far. And that was kind of the reminder to me of, you know, Mm. this is my my path to go down it's not anybody else's you know i I gotta ask i mean it obviously you would like to win the election yeah but it sounds like maybe you aren't planning on winning (laughs) i mean looking at the the polls from our last election in this Mm. riding it was very tight between the liberals and ndp i think only like a difference of a thousand votes yeah but then I don't think the Green Party were third even. Were we third? I, yeah, I don't know. So so really, the thing is, is winning was never what motivated me to, right, to get involved. Right, participating and making sure the message is there and providing yeah. people who supported an opportunity to cast their votes in a meaningful way. Yeah, and, and really that was my initial intention was just, yeah, giving people the opportunity to vote Green. But as there's been a lot of momentum building behind the green party. It's like through this whole year, Mm. it's stepped up to this other level. And now I, it's, it's changed. You know, my whole, my whole outlook and motivation has kind of changed through the year because there really is a huge bump in support. And so at first I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I'm just a paper candidate. Now I'm like, now there's a lot more expectation and, and really, my my biggest goal is I want to increase increase the turnout, increase the vote, and just just continue to advocate and like put pressure on whoever gets in and to make sure that our concerns as concerned citizens are not going on deaf ears, you know? It's it's just so important for me to continue advocating and and again it's it's about getting that experience of running so that in the future who knows? Right. Maybe I will win a seat, you know, and and as we have more, I think that this is the first time that people have been taking climate change seriously and it will only increase. Yeah. So as people understand the urgency, they will start to vote green. And I I swear and I know and I'll, I'll bet you that, yeah. you know, the future will be green. We just we just don't have other options. Right? right. And no one else is willing to go as far as we're willing to go. So I just want to continue to build off of this momentum and continue to do that kind of advocacy and like ground work, the real work that needs to be done to make this transition to a green economy. And so there's so much, so much of what I've been talking about is these, you know, skilled jobs that are in such high demand that are the, the exact skills that we need to take, you know, to retrofit every building, to, you know, expand our grid, to start changing our land management, you know, and, and our waste management, all of these things need to be done and they need people on the ground doing it. So I think that that even getting let go, that was like the kick in the butt to be like, this is, you know, that what I was doing was not serving to to advance any of these other things. I think right. it was holding me back from doing this kind of work. And Sounds really, like it's did. like it's almost like I've been liberated right. to go further and go that next step further. And so it's kind of a blessing in disguise. <laughs> yeah, you've been let go, but in the manner of like letting go of a dove that can yes. now soar and do something so much more. Yes, and I, I think people also kind of saw that i think that some of the people that i had worked with um probably 
they probably don't feel that bad for me because they expect that I'll just go on and do bigger right. or better things. So it, it wasn't like difficult for them to let me go. Maybe yeah. if somebody had more invested in the job, they'd feel a little more conflicted, but I think they already felt like I was on my way out. So, um, so yeah, but it was a little wrench in my hole because there's so much still going on and a lot of things that I'm like planning and getting ready for and going out door knocking and all this stuff. And so it was kind of like a wrench and in my motivation for this much more important thing, the campaign, you know? <laughs> and so I needed to, I needed to just take like a day to regroup and, and refocus and realize, okay, that's just noise, you know, unfog the glasses, like stay focused on what I'm doing. And what I want to do is run this campaign and just show up like in all the capacities that I need to before, before the 21st. <laughs> Well, it sounds like you're you're doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so. Like, I mean, the the response to it's been incredible. Like, I who would have known that you just put your name in, and all of a sudden there's just this groundswell of support, and all of these people who flock to this cause, and mm. it's so powerful, it's so inspiring. It it shows you the full potential of just people power and and even the the protests that were going on uh, last weekend yeah you know to see that kind of support and to be out there and you know these kind of protests it's like i i love going out and being involved in these demonstrations and protesting against all of these things that are unjust and it it's so powerful. You can see that there's something, there's a global consciousness rising. And, mm. you know, the other thing that motivates me is, you know, what side of history do you want to be on? Mm. Do you want to be known and go down as the person who continued to sympathize with big oil and continue to keep the blinders on and be in the dark on all of these issues? Or do you want to be the person who's championing the transition that we so desperately need and mm. new for better or for worse, no matter what happens, that you were advocating for what we, for the best qualities, you know, for the, the best of humanity, the, you know, the, the most ambitious, like that's what I want to do. You know? Well, I want to thank you for being on the podcast with yes. me. I'm going to let you go now so you can get out there and continue <laughs> to spread that message. Hannah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is so awesome. <laughs> 